What up, guys? The Bench Buddies are back with my college football bowl game preview and picks for the 27th through New Year's Day. But before we get into it, subscribe down below to be entered into our giveaway. First, we'll look at the results from the 16th to the 22nd. I went 5-5, five and five, not too bad. Ty started off hot, winning four in a row, and winning actually seven of the first eight, and then fell with the last two. Biggest surprise here in this game, I think it's Boise State not really showing up and not playing well. And same with Syracuse. They just got absolutely throttled by USF. Then in the next slide, from the 23rd to the 26th, biggest surprise here, I would say James Madison just not showing up and playing. And the Utah-Northwestern game was surprising to a lot as well, just because it was such a low-scoring game, and Utah really just couldn't get anything going on offense. We'll start with the first game today, Virginia Tech-Tulane. I'm going with Tulane here in a big upset in the bowl game, and Ty's going with Virginia Tech. I understand why. But I'm going with Tulane just because, you know, this team had a great run, 11-2 and two yet again. Last year was in a New Year's Six Bowl. Now they get not the benefit of the doubt here, but they're going in a military bowl. And I think this team can pull off an upset. At 530, you have North Carolina playing West Virginia. And West Virginia, to me this year, has been one of those teams that's been sneaky good. And North Carolina has not been as good as we thought they would be. So that's why I'm going with the Mountaineers. And then Ty's going with the Tar Heels here. You know, this bull pick em could be switching up here. Both of us are going with Louisville over USC, and obviously Caleb Williams is not playing in this one. And Louisville, this team had a chance to, you know, upset some people uh, late in the year against Florida State, and that didn't happen because Florida State did win. But the Cardinals, 10-3 and under their first year under Jeff Brom, very good year for them. And they're not getting enough credit. I know they're 15th in the country, but a win here might move them up to 10 with some other games. At nine, you have Texas A&M and Oklahoma State. I'm going with Oklahoma State. They've been a better team in bigger games this year. They've shown up. They obviously upset Oklahoma. And with that win, I think that's kind of why I'm leaning that way because they can beat big teams. And Texas A&M, you know, this year couldn't do that. Moving to Thursday, SMU, Boston College. Both of us are going with SMU here. Clearly the better team in this matchup. But it isn't at Fenway in Boston College. I've seen Boston. It's just pretty much a home game for them. But SMU, they're the better team on paper and have played that way this year. I don't think they cover, but I think they win. 215, you have Rutgers and Miami in the pinstripe bowl in Yankee Stadium. This is kind of like a home game here for Rutgers because it is out east where Miami's coming from the warm weather, flying into the cold. But I don't think that's going to be a factor here. I think Tyler Van Dyke and Miami are going to play well and get beat Rutgers here. At 545, and possibly the coolest trophy to win this year is the Pop-Tarts Bowl with a, two Pop-Tarts coming out of the top and a football toaster. I think NC State, the Wolfpack, is going to take that trophy home back to campus. And they've been really good in the ACC this year. They're consistently around 9-3, and 10-2 and two every year for the last few years. Kansas State had some good games this year, had some really bad games this year, and they're very inconsistent, and I'm going with the more consistent team in this one. Then at 11 on Thursday night, you have Arizona-Oklahoma. I think this is going to be a really good matchup here. Obviously, Dylan Gabriel is out here for Oklahoma as he's now an Oregon Duck. But Arizona, what they've done this year after how they started this year, it's a pretty remarkable story. And that's why I'm going with the Wildcats here. And, you know, when you have a quarterback for Oklahoma that isn't really accustomed to playing all the time, it's kind of tough to pick that team. Then moving to Friday in the Gator Bowl, you have clemson kentucky Clemson, we're both going with them just because better coaching. And, you know, Clemson is more accustomed to playing in a lot of bowl games where Kentucky really hasn't been here that much. At 2 o'clock, Oregon State, Notre Dame. Ty and I are both going with Notre Dame here. are probably the most respected team here uh, in a bowl game because a lot of them are going to play. I think Estime is still 50-50. But other than that, Sam Hartman, it's probably his last career game he's played in this one. And then obviously for Oregon State, DJ Ugalele is in the portal and still has undecided where he's going. And obviously they lost their coach, Jonathan Smith, to Michigan State. So there's a lot of uncertainty there for Oregon State heading into this game. At 3.30, you have Memphis, Iowa State. I'm going in the upset here. Ten and a half dogs. I'm going with Memphis in the Liberty Bowl. And Ty's going with Iowa State here. I'm just going with Memphis because I think in the American this year, they were a very good team. Obviously, they didn't get the benefit of the doubt, didn't get to play in the championship at a 9-3 record, but they were pretty solid. And I don't think teams are giving them enough credit, and I think this is where they're going to come out and show 
that they have been a good team all year and get to 10 wins. And then the first New Year's Six big bowl game, Missouri, Ohio State. I'm going with Missouri here in this one because Ohio State has a lot of questions. Obviously, McCord is gone now. He's at Syracuse. And, you know, people were calling for Ohio State's neck here after that loss to Michigan. Now they think Devin Brown's going to be the guy, and I don't think that's the case. Where Missouri, they have a lot to play for here, a lot of pride to play for, 10-2 and two year, very successful year. And that's what I think is going to happen. Missouri's going to beat the Marvin Harrison less Ohio State Buckeyes. Moving to Saturday, the 30th, Ole Miss, Penn State, and the Peach Bowl. Both of us are going to Penn State here. I think the defense is going to come up with a key stop late in this one to beat Ole Miss. That four and a half is a very good spread. I don't know who I would take in that one. Uh, it's probably going to be around a four or five point game, I think. So I'm kind of staying away from this one. But Penn State, they need to figure it out here on offense heading into next year as this team really needs to figure out how to pass against good teams. Two o'clock in the Music City Bowl. Auburn, Maryland, both of us are going with Auburn, the SEC team here. And normally in these matchups, SEC versus Big Ten or Big 12, the SEC team prevails in the bowl games just because, you know, football obviously means more to SEC schools and that they have played way tougher opponents this year. And now when you get an easier opponent, it tends to go their way. At four, you have Georgia, FSU, two teams that look like a lock to make the playoff. Until the last week of the season, some certain things happened to knock Florida State out. Georgia obviously lost in the SEC championship. And Georgia's favored by 17 and a half. FSU, I think, has 20-ish people sitting. Georgia, same boat. And Bowers and McConkey still have not decided if they're playing. But as of now, they are. And if that is the case, I think Georgia wins big here. At 4.30, Toledo, Wyoming. I'm going with the Rockets here. 11-2 is no joke. Wyoming put together a pretty solid year at 8-4, and four, but Toledo has been historically good at the back end of the season, and I think that continues here. Then moving to New Year's Day, you have Wisconsin, LSU. LSU is, you know, kind of been a horse this year, and I think it continues here where Wisconsin kind of scrapes into a bowl game at 7-5. and five. LSU should get to 10 wins for the second year under Brian Kelly. Then at 1, I was tempted to take Liberty just because why not, and Oregon, you know, some, some players sitting and whatnot, but I think Oregon is just a well-coached team. And to finish this year off at 12-2 and two is a very successful year. And obviously, their only two losses are to a playoff team in Washington. So looking back on it in a few years, I think you're going to say this is a very successful year if they win this game. Also at one, you have Iowa and Tennessee in the Citrus Bowl in Orlando. Tennessee's probably going to win this game because Iowa has no offense. And if Tennessee can somehow score more than 17 points. They're more than likely going to win this game. And that's why you see that over under so low at 36. Iowa's defense, one of the best, but their offense, non-existent, worse than the FBS. And then in the first playoff game, the Rose Bowl, Alabama, Michigan, obviously Ty and I are both going with Michigan here being Michigan fans. But the matchup is one of the better ones here. Michigan's defense is going to problems to the Alabama offense. and Michigan offense could, you know, expose this Bama defense secondary. But then again, Bama's offense could show up and show out and expose Michigan's defense. And Alabama's defense could expose Michigan's offense. It, this is probably the biggest coin flip uh, playoff game that we've seen in a while. But obviously, we're going with Michigan. And then who will they play? Who we think they're going to play? I think it's going to be Washington. I think it's going to be Texas. This is going to be another great game. Two offenses that can just go back and forth with each other. I think this is going to be a very high-scoring game. I think the over will hit in this one. I think it'll be a 38-35 game. Probably at least 68 points will be scored in this one. Um, if Washington wins this one, it's going to be a high-scoring affair. Texas, if they win this one, then it's probably going to be an under because I think Texas's defense will show out and limit Washington. That's not going to be the case. Michael Penix Jr. is going to put on another great game here with all his big three weapons but that's gonna be it for the bull pickums this year check back next week to see ty and i break down the national championship game and we'll go more in depth on matchups and whatnot but until the next time the bench buddies are out